My colleague, Andrea Cure, is our Vice President of Development and Strategic Initiatives. Andrea, welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me today. Well, wherever there's a need, there is B'nai B'rith. That isn't just a tagline uh, to you or to me or to all of us at B'nai B'rith. Tell us about what that means to you and how that fits in with B'nai B'rith's 180-year mission. Sure. So, as you well know, B'nai B'rith's founders started this organization to help those in need. Their first act was to provide a stipend for a needy widow and her children. And as this organization grew, so did this people helping people approach. Um, our first disaster relief efforts date back to the mid 1800s. As an example, we responded to a plea by Sir Moses Montefiore in 1865 to help victims of a cholera epidemic in, in what was then Palestine. The neighbors later distributed funds to those affected by the Great Chicago Fire, in 1871, the Galveston, Texas flood of 1900, the San Francisco earthquake, 1906. But, you know, there's other disasters and, and, and occurrences that we were present at. The Irish potato famine, Kishna pogrom, the Trigal Shirtwaist factory fire. The neighborhood was there to help during these now historic events, and we continue to help wherever there's a need. So more current, you know, current day events, the Oklahoma City bombing, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Sandy, we were there. When people and communities are in need, we activate to help those impacted recover and rebuild. You spent some time in Poland in March of 2022, uh, just to bring this uh, current, uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine. Uh, you were part of the B'nai B'rith Boots on the Ground team, finding ways to help Ukrainian refugees who had fled the fighting into Poland. Tell us what that experience was like and tell us about some specific aid that you and our team were able to provide uh, in Poland uh, to Ukrainians. Certainly. Well, you know, I will start off by saying that the experience was beyond meaningful. When we arrived in the first place we went was the train station in Warsaw. It was filled with refugees and it was also teeming with volunteers ready to help. This was very moving to see how the people of Poland and really people from all around the globe came to help these refugees escape the fighting. This was even more apparent when we traveled to the Medica border crossing where we spent time working in a mother and child tent. The site at the border was, it was remarkable. NGOs from all around the globe set up tent after tent to offer aid and assistance to refugees fleeing the war and individuals. People who wanted to help other people from all around the world came to help as well. A global community was created, and I am just honestly honored to have been a part of it. We spent days volunteering at this site and, and at others doing whatever was really needed. We delivered goods to community centers. We provided essentials such as diapers and formulas for babies, hot chocolate for their older siblings, and tea and coffee for their mothers. And at the refugee center in Shemchel, we even cleaned the restrooms. Why? Because there was a need and we, the neighborhood, was there. You know, it's so interesting, really. Something like this, it really comes down to people to people and almost individual to individual. And this summer, uh, you were in Poland again, uh, helping distribute donations from our Ukrainian Relief Fund for scholarships for Ukrainian students at the Morasha School in Poland. This is a good example of B'nai B'rith's long game in disaster relief, uh, though we help immediately, as noted in the case of your first visit to Poland in 2022. We are not primarily first responders, but we view our role as helping a community to get back on its feet. So with that in mind, uh, talk about these scholarships and how that helps in this um, disaster relief uh, process. Certainly. So yes, as you noted, our aid is usually focused on recovery and rebuilding. So it is that long game approach. And the scholarships we awarded to the students at the Mauritius School in Warsaw, it really allowed their families to worry about one less thing as they worked to rebuild their lives in their newly adopted homeland. And you know, while we were on site, we were lucky enough to be able to meet with three mothers who shared their stories with us and all that they had to leave behind and all that they had to go through since. 
They also shared how this school had become a second home for their children. And, and it was just an honor to be able to help these children rebuild their lives and continue their education. You know, as a development professional, these on the ground experiences delivering aid from the smallest item, a lip balm or some hand lotion to a school scholarship truly embody how philanthropy makes a difference. The work Benebreth has done in Poland in delivering a variety of aid to refugees reminds me how important and meaningful this work is. Every dollar truly counts and everyone who contributes to Benebreth should be proud as well as their support makes a difference in making sure that Benebreth is ready to act when needs arise, wherever and whenever. So really over the years, whether it's the Johnstown floods of the 1860s or any of the other disasters that uh, you mentioned uh, earlier, um, the mission remains the same over all of these years. Andrea, thanks again for all you do and thanks for being here. My pleasure, thank you.